Hey guys, my name is Shai and I am recording this weekly reading on August 28th. I think it is just after the Virgo new moon and I feel like I have some catching up to do because I haven't even talked about Virgo season and we passed through the Virgo new moon without me mentioning it and we've also had the Uranus retrograde that's all been happening and um, that's actually to me the theme right is like catching up catching up that's the, the theme for the remainder of virgo season so all the way into september kind of getting everything organized getting everything caught up tying up loose ends um but it's interesting because it's like this this catching up and this concluding it is flowing like really smoothly into some kind of new beginning it's like weaving it all together and you're you're con we're all con like concluding and beginning all at the same time concluding and beginning i see this like v-shape a thing like this big conclusion and this big beginning happening all at once um that is partly from the virgo new moon energy and partly from the uranus retrograde energy and i actually kind of feel like somebody has taken an ice cream scooper and like scooped my brain out of my skull and tossed it away <laughs> um in in a good way in a good way It was interesting. So I think this is the first new moon because I've been doing these weekly readings all year and I think this is the first new moon I n didn't didn't really address and I think that is really for the best and that's actually part of the energy of the new moon because I connected with quite a few people as we passed through the weekend and it seems like everybody had a very different experience with this new moon so which makes sense because Virgo is bringing the light within. It is your own inner energy. It is stabilizing your own inner light. So it makes sense that everyone's kind of running this through their system differently. Um, but now we are heading onwards and upwards to, in a couple of weeks, the Pisces full moon, which is one of my favorite full moons of the year because it is so magical. It is so magical and it is one of the I always experience it as a big concluding point of the year when something manifests. It's like, I think the Pisces full moon is the harvest moon, isn't it? Isn't, isn't that the, the one that it's labeled as? Anyway, so I'm looking forward for the next couple of weeks to have some kind of harvest. And that that's, that's, that's it, isn't it? Because what is a harvest? A harvest is a conclusion, but also a beginning because you're concluding the growing season and you're actually reaping the reward you're literally getting the crops out of the field and then you're beginning a whole new cycle where you actually get to eat your harvest and you're moving into the autumn into winter of course any southern hemisphere people watching this are going to be having like a flipped <laughs> an inverted experience and i i really really would be very curious to experience this time of year in the southern hemisphere where you know winter is kind of coming to an end and spring is blossoming and it, it's sort of the same thing but all in reverse would be very interesting very interesting so however way this goes for you let's just get some cards i just want to know like what what do we want to know for this week queen of cups well that's a good way to start <laughs> that's making the left side of my head tingle Nine of Cups, wish fulfillment and emotional maturity. That's the harvest. So this harvest and page of cups. I don't remember the last time I drew three cups all at once. So this harvest is of an emotional nature. Okay, this harvest is of an emotional nature. You're, you've gotten it together, this Queen of Cups. So if the Virgo, moon, if you've been through any kind of like emotional purging lately, I feel like that is coming to an end. Like look at these beautiful cards. You could not really ask for three more emotionally satisfying, stable and peaceful type of energy. This is so good. So for so many of us, the emotional purging is kind of over. You've been through this process of like really really coming into a new level of emotional maturation right like queen of cups and nine of cups i'm just i'm shaking my head i know you guys can't see but it's like uh for some some of us it's like a, a period of inner child healing has been is ending and has been integrated because it was like there was some leftover like 
maybe some kind of leftover whiny energy or some leftover like trauma from your childhood or you know from your soul's history right different kind of things that you've been working through and you've been resolving and it's like here you you're concluding that cycle right you might have another cycle of that spiral around for you later and that's fine it's always an it's always an ongoing process right but just know that whatever you've released whatever emotions you've processed that you you've done enough like it was good enough and you've done enough and you are enough whatever you've been doing it's enough so big <laughs> that that is really strong here that is really strong know that like you are enough what you do is enough and whatever you do whatever whatever amount of work that you, that you do whatever kind of work that you do and this includes all all variety of work right work like at your job yes but even more specifically work in the home like work you do supporting your family like housework cleaning cooking emotional support for your family and then also all the inner work you do on yourself right uh, anything that you that you do that you, that could be construed as work in one manner or another anything that you put effort into just know that it is enough know that it is enough it is enough it is enough massive message and it's funny I don't know if you could hear my husband sneezing in the other room um, when I sat down to do this reading I started sneezing I was like sneezing my head off before I turned on the camera so that's interesting um, I connect sneezes with heart chakra work right I connect sneezes with heart, uh, why did I say heart chakra that's not what I meant I meant to say throat because like you know like throat sinuses nose it like you know ear nose and throat that all kind of goes together so but but what i said was heart so it, it, that's interesting um this message has been coming through actually um like the heart and the throat chakras like learning to like literally energy moving between them um heart-based communication and what is between your heart chakra and your throat chakra that's where most people would place the high heart right the high heart so that's actually um that's coming in here through here too through like connecting and harmonizing your heart and your throat so that's like your your intuitive awareness your love and your compassion and your ability to communicate those things you're activating and bringing online your high heart some people see the high heart chakra as pink some people also see it as turquoise so the high heart i feel is like very 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 much open to interpretation you don't need to necessarily so i don't want to describe it too much because just feel into it right feel into it like um just between your, your your heart and your throat right kind of that part in your chest like just below your collarbone that's kind of where I, I feel mine right and tap tap there I'm like I feel I feel really compelled to tap there there's even interesting there's even I can't remember what it's called but there is an energetic practice where people like tap parts of their bodies to like activate the energy centers there um somebody might be interested in exploring that i don't remember what it's called if anybody knows maybe comment <laughs> um because virgo season right so this is a really good like the the all the way until we get into libra season right at the end of september i'm trying to like think of a calendar and it's i struggle with that when i'm in the channeling state i can't think of things like calendars <laughs> um so bear bear with me while I try to spit this out so if we're still we still got like three weeks or so left of Virgo season and this is going to be really good time to be like experimenting with different grounded practices that maybe you don't normally do so like that like tapping tapping your body to activate the energy centers there like doing yoga doing stretching doing breath work um tai chi right like a a anything that that like connects your spirituality to your body in a very grounded way really 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 just it just goes with the virgo vibe so if you want to try something for in a new in a new way right if you want to try something in a new way because this is a really really good time to, to to begin that new way to begin that new way if you haven't been receiving results that you want because you've been doing something the same old way try a different way and just like experiment right this page of cups this is very experimental energy experimental energy really 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 be free to experiment just do just do things it's like just do don't think just do don't think just do that is a kind of an interesting message to receive here through this virgo energy because virgo is ruled by mercury and virgo can be very very minded right interesting it's because it's like this minded earth energy minded earth energy is the interesting thing about virgo um but it also has fire energy as well in it because it it carries the light right it's the hermit the like the the light keeper virgo will be the light keeper 
what is this all driving towards? I can hear, I can hear my, my statements like spiraling around. What is this all driving towards? I'm literally just seeing a spiral or like water going down a funnel, but it's like all of this energy funneling, all of this energy funneling because it's, we have a ton of planetary retrogrades happening right now, like so many. And um, I, I really feel the Uranus retrograde very strongly because my sun is conjunct Uranus. So every time it goes retrograde, it's like putting my solar energy into a retrograde. So it's like spiraling, spiraling, spiraling. So you're really, really, really in this energetic vortex, but you're at the center of the vortex and all of this, diff this different energy is spiraling all through you. And there's going to be a little bit of a filtering process while all of the energy spirals through you, allow it to just keep passing through you. So you sometimes you're going to try something and it's not going to work and then just let it go, right? Um, so just keep like sampling and experimenting and seeing how things work and then just let the things that fail, just let them flow right through you. Like don't even for a second, don't even for a second worry about like, oh, I put my energy into that and then it didn't work out. It's like, whatever, just let, like, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it flow right past you. Just keep moving on to the next new thing. And I think, um, so yeah, I was saying like, don't think, just do, don't think, just do. <laughs> um, interesting energy for Virgo because Virgo typically wants to think things through but I think because of so many retrogrades especially the Uranus retrograde because Uranus is connected into the higher mind um and it's now like moving like backwards and now it's like out of sync it's strange it's weird um and it's Uranus is weird to begin with so if you allow your human mind to stop thinking you allow your higher guidance to take over that's what this is about, right? So this is actually allowing us to tune into the higher frequencies of Virgo. I think that the really like nitpicky, data-driven, um, thinky, thinky, thinky <laughs> type of energies of Virgo, um, I don't really think that's... The nitpicky is definitely like a lower frequency of Virgo, but the, the mid-tier energy, the kind of average, normal, everyday energies of Virgo, that would be the very mind-based and the data-driven aspects of Virgo. But right now, I think we're actually tuning into the higher aspects of Virgo, which is allowing the light to take over, allowing your higher guidance to take over and flowing through life with like synchronicity and poise, synchronicity and poise, poise and synchronicity going one hand in hand. And that's interesting because I had an incredibly synchronous morning and I woke up this morning and for whatever reason, I was like, I'm going to double down on following my in intuition, like for like the minutia of my day. I find that I am very you know, over the last several years, I've been really practicing following my intuition for like big life choices, right? For big trajectories. Um, but I don't always like for my day to day life and like the day to day life, that's Virgo energy too, right? Virgo six health energy. For my day to day life, I find I often like allow my mind to take over. And like, you know, for simple things like how much detergent to put in the laundry, um, what glass to drink my orange juice out of, how many tomatoes to buy at the grocery store, wh when to go out, take my dog outside, all of these things. Like I'm always like calculating in my mind, calculating in my mind. That's really funny. And now a dog starts barking right outside, right? When I said that, that's the kind of synchronic synchronicities I'm talking about. So anyway, this morning I woke up and I was like, you know what? All of these little minutia of my day, I'm going to like drop out of, I'm going to like a drop out of the mind for that. I'm going to see if I can just follow my intuition for the minutia of my day, for the micro moments of my day. And I mean, I've only been awake for like six hours and that's working out really well so far. That has like, I, and but some of the things that it's like, I don't understand, right? Like grabbing, I grab a glass and my, like, I feel the energy go, no, not that glass, take this glass. And I'm like, why does it matter what glass I drink out of? Right. And I actually kind of prefer this other glass, but I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm just running this experiment. I'm just going to see how this goes. Right. What if I just allow my, my intuition, my energetic guidance, my energetic guidance to dictate the, the like the my micro actions and so far i am really enjoying that it has been working out with a series of synchronicities that are even beyond my understanding and when i say synchronicities like i am i have become in the last three years used to a constant continual feed of synchronicities right i i got i remember when i first started experiencing synchronicities when i first had my awakening back in 2019 i would get really excited when i'd get like one really cool synchronicity a day and but now and then it like, you know, for the last couple of years, it, it was, it would be, I would get several really cool synchronicities a day. But now I like, I'm not even kidding over the last week or so it's been <laughs> off the charts. It'll be like, I could have five incredible synchronicities a minute, like where I'm reading something. Um, and then every time I read a word, I will hear somebody from the next room say the same word that I'm reading and, and or, you know, 
or I'll hear it on a, on a song or on the TV or stuff like that. Or I say dog and then I hear a dog barking outside and that can happen like multiple times a minute and it just doesn't let up all day. And, and it's like absolutely incredible. <laughs> and I always feel that for me, synchronicities, the more I experience them, the more it's letting me know that I'm in the flow, right? That I'm in the flow, that I'm flowing in the right direction, that I'm going with the flow of the universe, right? That I'm really just synchronized up. A synchronicity has got to be a sign of synchronicity, right? That's And that's really all a synchronicity is, right? It's, a synchronicity shows you that you are synchronized. When you're synchronized with something and when you're experiencing synchronicity, well, then you know you're synchronized with it. <laughs> it's like, so if you, if you, like, it's just a snowball in that direction, right? The more synchronicities, the more you know you're synchronized and the more you try to synchronize with your higher guidance, with your inner guidance, however you want to look at it, the more synchronicities you experience. And then you should have this snowballing effect of this synchronistic life, nine of cups, right? <sighs> Earth's system of life, death, and rebirth is a pulsing geometric construct. Death is simply the way geometries are pulled back into the whole. <laughs> oh my god. So, pulsing geometric construct. This is something that I perceive, that I, that I perceive when I'm talking about like synchronizing with the universe because I, I like see in my mind's eye how everything, like everything, the whole 3D system, all of us with our, with our energy and the whole earth system and the whole galaxy and the whole higher dimensional system, it's just like, like geometry is made of light, right? Just like cosmic cascading geometry is made of light, light, but it pulses and it breathes. I don't know how to describe that. It's like either you've glimpsed that or you haven't. <laughs> um, it, but that that's that's just that's the sense that I get when I really drop out of the physical um the physical layer, right? That's what that's what I see. And this is even it's like talking about life, death and rebirth. So I feel like this could go really serious for some people and then way more lighthearted for others. So the lighthearted way of this is that this is like, if anybody watched the last video I posted, I was just kind of talking through my experiences with like multi multiverse theory, right? Many, 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 many different versions of yourself and that how it feels like there's these, there's these like the column life, the vertical tree, tree trunk life, and then the branching off little dead end lives, the little branch lives, the tree trunk life, the tree trunk life, which for me is this life I'm living right now. This is one of my tree trunk lives. And then I have all these little branch lives where my lives were kind of just normal and boring and I didn't really awaken, but I lived just various versions of a normal life, right? and then died right and I see these as like little exploratory they're like lesson lives they're learning lives they're research lives they're very valuable um but they're also kind of less interesting right but they all they all stem off and it's like it's like a network of mushrooms you guys you guys know how like mushrooms like all connect underground right with their root system and like the bulk of the mushroom the thing that is actually the mushroom is mostly underground and then it has like the little mushroom heads that poke up and those are just the fruiting bodies <laughs> like the sex organs really like the mushroom that pokes up out of the ground it's it's just that's how it reproduces it's like a mushroom penis you know <laughs> like and it, it's like that that same that same thing like the the network of mushrooms and the fruiting body of the mushroom sticking up under the over out of the ground like i i could that that's a really good analog or really good analogy for how the universe works in this pulsing geometric construct of light. We have some lives that are the mushroom heads that sprout out, right? But then they're like the network, right? The bulk of the, the consciousness, the bulk of the mushroom is underground. So you can see this, you can think of this just in terms of that way, right? Like little bits of consciousness shooting off. We have little parts of our consciousness that shoots off, explores, lives and dies, and then releases its spores to reproduce and then it just rots and goes back into the earth or just comes back in to be reintegrated back into the, the main life back into the tree trunk life and that is what so many of us are experiencing right now where in very very in many 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 different ways we are integrating our kind of branch lives right those other lives that we lived that were more boring where we didn't really awaken where we didn't really explore our spirituality as deeply but maybe we had a like maybe we did different things right maybe we had a good career maybe we had a we raised a family we did different things right we learned different lessons and we had different good experiences but we're like integrating all of those so it's like all of the things you lived and learned in all of your parallel lives you're integrating so many of those lessons right now 
and it's really incredible and they're like coming back to you they're coming back to you just like the like like the mushroom has the mushroom part has died and now its energy is being reintegrated it all comes back to the center so you are rapidly 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 sucking back the energy from all of your parallel lives so that it can come into the central column or the central tree trunk that is this life for you right now and it's like powering you up you're literally like reclaiming this, like little bits of your soul like soul fragments you are reclaiming soul fragments like at an exponentially at a speed that is exponentially faster than you used to maybe you used to integrate little soul fragments like once in a while right but now it's like an entire cascade of them collapsing back in on you <laughs> um so some of you could be having severe ascension symptoms right now some of you might just be sneezing a lot right but some of you could be having very severe ascension symptoms which can play out you know physically emotionally mentally psychically whatever because it's because you're having a massive amount of your own soul's energy cascading back into you right now and it's like you're <laughs> evolving really fast and so the other part of this for those of you where this stems a little bit darker right i mean and it's not that it's darker it's that it might feel darker for you if you're grieving the loss of a loved one or if you're worrying about you know physical death right this is really inviting you to feel into that <sighs> It is completely, completely normal, you know, when we are in our human bodies. And this is one of those things where um, it can feel like, why do I still fear death? Why do I still worry about it? Like, I, I've been walking my spiritual path. Why do I still fear death? I completely understand on an intellectual level, on a cognitive level, I completely understand that death is just returning to source right and that it, nothing is lost and nothing is like that death is just the transition right it, and it's like you get that you get that you really do get that and yet there's still something in your human body right something in your human experience that is unwilling to fully integrate that and your human your human experience is still um clinging to the fear of death and like still like still processing the fear of death it's not about clinging to it it's that you're still processing the fear of death still um processing the fear of losing a loved one or processing the fear of your own, you know, eventual transition, right? Um, and that is a huge, massive topic that I don't really think anything I can say in this video video will help you with that. <laughs> um, all I can say is that there is an energetic, an energetic transmission being transmitted to you right now because um, I literally this year okay literally this year over the past year i have been going through my own personal process of releasing you know fears of death and going through grieving processes of having lost loved ones and many different levels it would be a whole big long story to get into it but, but it, that's the point like it doesn't need to be explained it doesn't need to be explained because this is something that can basically only be released and healed for you through your own experience right through your own experiences through your own life experiences um but what i so i think the point of me kind of talking through all of this but also not really being able to say anything specific for you because this is the kind of thing where words don't help right words don't help you work through issues around death right the words words don't help but energy can help energy can help so that like right now i can actually i can like feel um the the lessons that i have learned right the, the the energy that i have integrated on this topic it is being transmitted out through this video so if you really would like to receive that like really um if you would like to consent to going through a process of releasing your fears around death right and releasing your fears around death if you would like to consent to that process you can just say yes right and the energy uh, somebody did <laughs> at least one person did so even if there's only one person still watching this part of the video i can feel that one person did accept that and i can feel the energy that's like flowing out from me it flowed into at least no there's a few more <laughs> so there there is a, is a small group of you where this was relevant um i can literally this is really intense actually i can feel the um like the light codes and the like the energetic encoding is how I want to describe it here the energetic encoding the lessons that I have learned flowing out to you and it's like that, that will help you integrate through this experience more smoothly and just to be clear this doesn't have to mean that to learn this lesson that you need to experience any kind of near-death experience or that you have to lose a loved one it's like that's actually the point of an energetic transmission like this where you can begin to work through 
the fears of like the all the fears that surround a death you can work through this without actually having to experience it it's like you can experience on an inner level you can experience it on an energetic level you can work through it in your dreams you can work through it by watching movies reading books right listening to people talk about it um and yeah, i'm getting a lot of shivers so allowing opening up to this like really um i'm proud of you guys actually anybody who said yes because <laughs> you are allowing yourself to work through this process on an energetic level on an inner level and that means that the lessons won't need to manifest in the physical right any lesson that we can integrate and learn completely internally completely energetically then it doesn't need to happen outside of us so this is really really good and just for you guys specifically just take it easy know that you might be having some strange you might have some strange dreams over the next few days <laughs> um and really um i'm i'm really serious about like you can integrate these lessons by watching tv i'm um, watching movies reading books watching youtube videos so just really follow like that little energetic nudge that little pull your intuition to like consume any of that type of media or any type of content because there could be like surprise lessons right if you watch a movie where someone is going through like a grieving process that you like vicariously can go through that with the character in the movie that's why movies are so energetically important to us right so yeah okay that's <laughs> and that's basically all i want to say on that i am just also drawn to the fact that i have had this card here this miracles card sitting in this box um everyone like i drew this card for myself a couple days ago and i was like this is so awesome because look at this this is miracles <laughs> this is the double rainbow and i was like how am i gonna box that back up right so i just left it sitting out here like this <laughs> and i was really really drawn to that maybe maybe now after this after recording this video i can finally put it away because this has been sitting there vibing for a while so i think the last thing i'll do is i'll just read the 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 card read the blurb read the blurb for this card miracles and new beginnings that's the, the card right after this miracles and new beginnings guys double rainbow after the storm the rainbow appears no matter where we are the instant a rainbow splashes across the sky we usually stop and stand in awe some say that rainbows are messages from the creator. Others say that they are a part of the electromagnetic spectrum phenomenon. But no matter the explanation for their existence, rainbows have struck awe in the hearts and souls of many through time. Many traditions believe that rainbows are blessings from the creator. A double rainbow is a double the blessings. The storms of the past are passing and your dreams are coming true. No matter what has happened in the past, your future holds abounding miracles. Good fortune, celestial beauty, and inner divinity are expanding within you. Believe that your life is guided. Trust in the goodness of the universe. A celestial bridge to the heavens is opening for you. Start a health program, invest in your career, or initiate a relationship, and good fortune will manifest. Blessings are flowing in all directions. Believe that you deserve the best because you do. Bounty, joy, blessings, and miracles are flowing your way. All right, guys, sending you so much love and light. I'll talk to you later. Bye.